اے عشق ازل گیر و ابد تاب میرے بھی ہیں کچھ خواب اے عشق ازل گیر و ابد تاب میرے بھی ہیں کچھ خواب اس دور سے اس دور کے سوکھے ہوئے دریاؤں سے پھیلے ہوئے صحراؤں سے اور شہر کی ویرانوں سے ویرانا گروں سے میں حزین اور اداس اے عشق ازل گیر و ابد تاب میرے بھی ہیں کچھ خواب اے عشق ازل گیر و ابد تاب میرے بھی ہیں کچھ خواب وہ خواب کے اسرار نہیں جن کے ہمیں آج بھی معلوم وہ خواب جو آسودگی مرتبہ و جا سے آلودگی گرد سر راہ سے معصوم جو زیست کی بےحدہ کشا کش سے بھی ہوتے نہیں معدوم خود زیست کا مفہوم اے عشق ازل گیر و ابد تاب اے کاہن دانشور و عالی گہر و پیر تو نے ہی بتائی ہمیں ہر خواب کی تعبیر تو نے ہی سجھائی غم دلگیر کی تسخیر ٹوٹی تیرے ہاتھوں ہی سے ہر خوف کی زنجیر اے عشق ازل گیر و ابد تاب میرے بھی ہیں کچھ خواب کچھ خواب ہیں آزاد مگر بڑھتے ہوئے نور سے مروب نئے حوصلہ خوب ہے نئے ہمت نا خوب گو ذات سے بڑھ کر نہیں کچھ بھی انہیں محبوب ہے آپ ہی اسی ذات کے جاروب ذات سے محجوب اے عشق ازل گیر و ابد تاب میرے بھی ہیں کچھ خواب کچھ خواب ہیں پروردہ انوار مگر ان کے سہر گم جس آگ سے اٹھتا ہے محبت کا خمیر اس کے شرر گم ہے کل کی خبر ان کو مگر جز کی خبر گم یہ خواب ہیں وہ جن کے لیے مرتبہ دیدہ تر ہیچ دل ہیچ ہیں سر اتنے برابر ہیں کہ سر ہیچ ارض ہنر ہیچ اے عشق ازل گیر و ابد تاب یہ خواب میرے خواب نہیں کہ میرے خواب ہیں کچھ اور کچھ اور میرے خواب ہیں کچھ اور میرے دور خوابوں کے اس نئے دور میں نئے مور و ملخ نئے اسد طور نئے لذت تسلیم کسی میں نہ کسی کو حوث سے جور سب کے نئے طور اے عشق ازل گیر و ابد تاب میرے بھی ہیں کچھ خواب ہر خواب کی سوگند ہر چند کے وہ خواب ہیں سر بستہ اور روبند سینے میں چھپائے ہوئے گویا گویائی یہ دوشی ذائے لبخند ہر خواب میں اجسام سے افکار کا مفہوم سے گفتار کا پیوند اشحاق کے لب ہائے ازل تشنا کی پیوستگی شوق کے مانند اے لمحائے خرسند اے عشق ازل گیر و ابد تاب میرے بھی ہیں کچھ خواب وہ خواب ہیں آزادی کامل کے نئے خواب ہر سعی جگر دوز کے حاصل کے نئے خواب آدم کی ولادت کے نئے جشن پہ لہراتے جلاجل کے نئے خواب اس خاک کی ستوت کے منازل کے نئے خواب یا سینہ گیتی میں نئے دل کے نئے خواب اے عشق ازل گیر و ابد تاب میرے بھی ہیں کچھ خواب میرے بھی ہیں کچھ خواب واہ کیا کہنے کمال کمال بہت بہت شکریہ سامعین معذرت تاخیر کے لیے یہ اصل میں ہماری پہلی انوگرل زوم میٹنگ ہے تو تھوڑی سی ٹیکنیکل ڈیفیکلٹیز اب انشاءاللہ ہم ان کو پر کر لیں گے تو پہلے تو میں آپ کو انٹروڈکشن تھوڑی سی دیتی چلوں میرا نام زرمین انساری ہے میں جویا فردو کے ساتھ آئی ورک وید جویا فردو اور کیونکہ یہ بائلنگویل آرگنائزیشن ہے معذرت کے ساتھ میں انگریزی میں انٹروڈکشن دوں گی پھر باقی ہماری جو گفتگو ہے وہ بائلنگویل ہوگی انگریزی اردو دونوں میں سب سے پہلے تو آداب السلام علیکم گڈ ایوننگ ٹو ایوری ون ٹو دس ویری اسپیشل اینڈ لاسٹ منٹ آن لائن سیشن فار دی ٹو کمیمریٹ نور میم راشد اپ کمنگ برتھ اینیورسری آن آگسٹ دا فرسٹ وی ہیو ڈاکٹر شون پیو ود اس ٹو نائٹ ہی ویری کائنڈلی اگریڈ ٹو ڈو ٹو کم ٹو دس ایونٹ to be part of this event. And so we decided to uh, actually open it online. We were going to just do a recording and then release it on August 1st, but because he was kind enough to join in. Uh, I'd just like to say a few words about Joy of Urdu. Joy of Urdu is a bilingual organization for the revitalization of Urdu. Uh, and uh, we have chapters all around the world. Uh, we do this also through reading groups, uh, these reading groups around the world, as well as uh, the uh, publication of bilingual books uh, that are coming up. Um, 
our recently concluded uh, campaign ghar baithiye kitabe padhiye which uh, encourage people to recommend books during this time of corona and quarantine was uh, extremely popular we shared 193 videos uh, from 10 countries 40 cities and represented 108 writers and poets um i'd like to introduce our uh, speaker tonight um shon pyo uh, it's really actually funny i'd also like to give a shout out to dr siddharth chandra who is um a professor at uh, at michigan msu michigan state university who introduced us uh, he thought that uh, joy of urdu uh, should be in touch with the tran- one of the translators of noon meem rashid and uh, that was uh, coincidental and serendipitous because we were about to um, do this online recorded session to commemorate his birth anniversary um, and we have actually used uh, sean pew's translations in many of our previous events uh, last year at this time at al sarkal avenue in dubai we had a very successful uh, event where faraz who is with us uh, um, actually mentions it in the video that the translations that we are using of noon meem rashid's poems are of dr shan pew so uh, before further ado let me just quickly introduce him dr shan pew is an associate professor of hindi language and south asian literature and culture at michigan state university his i too have dreams noon meem rashid and modernism in urdu poetry was published by the university of california press in 2014 He has served as a director of the Digital Humanities Program at Michigan State University and recently received an Andrew Mellon New Directions Fellowship that allowed him to study linguistics and computer data science for his current research on poetic sound in South Asian poetry. He holds a PhD in Middle East and Asian languages and cultures and comparative literature and society from Columbia University. Also with us tonight are two of uh, the team members of Joy of Urdu. Both of them uh, are chapter heads in their uh, respective cities, uh, in Dubai and Lahore. Uh, Faraz uh, is an interdisciplinary uh, designer and a performing artist. He runs the Dubai chapter. Um, Alim is an accountant whose passion is literature. He writes poetry and. Uh, keeps us uh, sane let's just put it that way <laughs> and he is also not just the lahore chapter head but also on our advisory board so we're very lucky to have everyone here the way we'll uh, organize this i think uh, is that we will ask uh, shawn a few questions uh, and then um, in whatever order of poem he wants the two poems that we will be sharing the text of in our Uh, online um, at the on at the end of this recording, so uh, we will have Faraz read one of them and Ali, and then he he will talk about that, and then Aliem will read the other, and he'll talk about that. Um, and the discussion uh, is going to be actually between the three of them. If people have questions, please put that in the um, in the chat, and we will ask him uh, if there is time at the end of this event. So uh the first question Sean thank you welcome thank you very much uh the uh the first question i think everybody wants to hear is how why urdu um and how did you come about uh, studying it well that's a yeah that's a, a question i often ask myself as well <laughs> uh, but uh Yeah so I I'm I'm from uh, San Diego California which is in the it's in the southwest corner of the United States that's where I was that where I was born and then I went to school at University of California Berkeley which is near San Francisco and that's one of the schools in the US that has a very strong Indian and South Asian studies program and so when I was there I started taking classes with a professor named Adishu Bail or behel um and um yeah and he kind of he taught my my first urdu class i'd done a a summer they had been intensive uh, hindi courses and then they then people move into urdu there that are used to used to do that now they start they can start in urdu and so then uh, we uh so i'd done i guess 
uh, year, a summer course and then a year long course. And then I went into my first Urdu course with, with him. And uh, we learned the script in two weeks and then started reading uh, Zahra Ishq by, uh, by uh, Mirza Shah Lakhnavi. So it was rather painful experience, but the, um, but the, yeah, the poetry spoke to me a lot as a young man. And then I went to Pakistan after I finished my, my degree. There's a program through, it's still operating now through LUMPS uh, part of the year called the Berkeley Urdu Language Program in Pakistan or Bullpip. And so I was able to do that. So I lived with a family in uh, Lahore in uh, Shah Almi, uh, which is uh, in the Andarun Shahar. And uh, so they were, uh, they were a Muhajir family, but they're, uh, and there's a lot of Punjabi culture as well. So, uh, so that was a really nice experience. And then I went to graduate school at Columbia and I wasn't really planning to move into literature, but um, uh, exactly, but then I, that's kind of where I, where, where I wound up. And, uh, with, and I was studying with Francis Pritchett, who I'm sure you've heard of, who's one of the uh, leading Urdu scholars. Uh, 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 in uh, in the U.S. and internationally, so that's basically how I how I began. <laughs> Another uh, question that we'd like to ask is that you're very well known for your work with, on Noormeem Rashid. Uh, why him and and not anyone else? Not that you know. What particularly drew you to him? That's well, I, yeah. That's an interesting question. I um, had I was reading. This is very interesting because my my uh, one of my um, colleagues, uh, Gita Patel, who teaches at University of Virginia, took uh, the same class with Francis Pritchett, and then wound up doing uh, writing a book on Miraji. Uh, so uh, we were reading Miraji and Fez and Rashid as part of the modern Urdu poetry class, and I had a really strong aesthetic reaction to the poetry, especially some of the desert poetry, and it really resonated with a lot of my interests in the time as well. Mm -hmm. So I was, I was studying Persian pretty intensively and uh, uh, Hamid uh, Dabashi, who's a, a well-known professor there, was sitting with us and reading Rumi's Masnavi every week. And uh, wow. so I could hear a lot of the, the modern Persian as well, kind of coming through in some of the, some of the poems, because Rashid was of course, uh, uh, spoke uh, Persian fluently and lived in Iran. And so, that aspect and there's lots of kind of also you know hints of Rumi and so on happening as well so uh, and it also kind of spoke to my kind of concerns with critical theory and uh, uh, thinking through the through the contemporary world and uh, so yeah it's good I mean there was this within uh, South Asian studies especially for people coming out of the University of Chicago uh, tradition. So, so Francis Pritchett was a student of CM Naim's, uh, and uh, Aditya, who was my teacher at, at Berkeley, was also from Chicago. So, mm -hmm. there the the kind of the strategy is you pick a text and then you write you write a dissertation about the text, uh, which is a terrible strategy, and I don't recommend it. But uh, because then you have to kind of figure out the 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 order to it. But um, so. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so that's anyway, that's what I wound up, that's what I wound, how I wound up uh, working on it. So I did my dissertation and, and then did a lot of substantial revisions uh, for, the, for the book manuscript. We were discussing uh, amongst ourselves before the event and we were thinking of questions that we, we really personally wanted to ask you and I'm sure people will have questions at the end as well. Um, one thing that we find is that um, as, in, as a volunteer organization, Joy of Urdu gets a lot of people. We have wonderful people helping us. And sometimes people will say, oh, I would like to do some, you know, bilingual organization. We'd like to do translation. And, <clears throat> um, you know, I, I, I've worked on a little bit of translation myself, and I know how absolutely ridiculously difficult it is. And poetry even more so. And people will write to us and they'll say, yes, yes, we can do translation and they'll do Google Translate. Uh, so we quickly realized that one of the upcoming sessions, and I hope we can actually invite you and a few other translators, uh, you know, to actually talk to people and explain the, you know, what translation is and you really can't Google Translate. And so that's a whole topic for another session, but could you just give a very small overview about that just about translation and the difficulty or challenge of poetics. Oh, that's a, yeah, that's a wonderful question. I think I'm hoping there was a period, at least kind of within the study of South Asia back in the, uh, 
maybe late late seventies and and so on, coming out of or in the seventies, kind of coming out of Chicago, where people were thinking really critically about uh, translation and its mm -hmm. possibilities. And since then, it's kind of fallen out of style. So I'm hoping that there that we can have a renewed discussion of that. And I'm thinking also about a I'll, I have some 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 plans in the works uh, that that will that involve that, but. There are some amazing, I mean, these translators uh, who, uh, I mean, the, the work that's been done kind of moving from, from Urdu to English uh, and, and in from English to Urdu is, 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 uh, is quite incredible. And mm -hmm. so I'm always curious too about how people go about it. And so there seems to be two different schools of thought. So one group will write down the words of the sentence and then form it into a set, and then uh, that in, in, translate them and write them in kind of maybe mm -hmm. in a in a in a list, and then work them into a sentence. And then other people can do do all of that in their in their head as well. So um, mm. uh, it was yeah. So for what I what I try to do with these translations is to kind of make them make them literal. But the, I dropped some of the there's some grammatical things in Urdu that you just don't really need in in uh, and they sound ridiculous in English. So I dropped I dropped some of those. Um, and uh, but can I try to an, kind of can you give an example oh, like uh, like jata uh, rata or something like that like some of those those types of cases that don't really mm -hmm. add that much that much information or if they, mm -hmm. sometimes they can wind up sounding clunky I made a, a list at some point I don't I don't know where it is but uh, uh, so that's one thing I did I try to make it into contemporary American English and so so that when I you know so I was trying to write both for you know, the, the transnational or do literary community, but also for scholars interested in South Asian mm -hmm. literature, also in moder modernism more generally. So trying to make it more in uh, kind of, uh, con into kind of contemporary uh, prose. Um, and so that's basically, yeah, that was kind of my, my strategy with that. So trying to make it so it sounds good in English and uh, to my ear at least, and then, um, and so that it's uh, understandable and trying to avoid uh, notes and stuff like that as much as possible. Mm -hmm. So we were, you had discussed when I, when I spoke with you, literally we have barely a day between when we <laughs> spoke and, 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 and tonight. Um, and I said, Oh, I'm sure everybody will want to hear um, uh, Zindagi Se Darte Ho. And you uh, rolled your eyes and you said, Oh, I'm so tired of that. Uh, it's, it, but it is one of the most popular poems. Um, we had people read those for our uh, online campaign as well. Uh, yeah. And um, I'm sure, I mean, people who've, who've logged in, who are watching us on Facebook and, and seeing us, uh, joining us on Zoom, uh, they will feel uh, quite cheated <laughs> if we don't talk about that. So uh, I, th I think I, I warned you that we will ask you to talk about that. Um, should we have for us... Uh, recite it in Urdu and then you can do the English translation and then talk further about it or how do you want to go about it how would you prefer uh yeah no that sounds good why don't you it's not that it's not that long so we can do the whole yeah. um yeah just do the recitation and then I could read the the English and then um we can talk about some of the if there are any words that seem unfamiliar and then what it's trying to figure out what it's saying I think that'll be that'll be nice to have kind of a discussion about it Okay, great. So, uh, Faraz, you're up. Okay, so for the one millionth time, I'm going to read this <laughs> poem. And uh, so, Rashid says, Zindagi se darte ho, zindagi to tum bhi ho, zindagi to hum bhi hain. Aadmi se darte ho, aadmi to tum bhi ho, aadmi to hum bhi hain. Aadmi zubaan bhi hai, aadmi bayaan bhi hai, usse tum nahi darte. हर फोमानी के रिश्ता हाय आहन से आदमी है वाबस्ता आदमी के दामन से जिंदगी है वाबस्ता उससे तुम नहीं डरते अनकही से डरते हो जो घड़ी अभी जो अभी नहीं आई उस घड़ी से डरते हो उस घड़ी की आमद की आगही से डरते हो पहले भी तो गुजरे हैं दौर नरासाई के बेरे आ खुदाई के फिर भी समझते हो हिच आरजू मंदी ये शब जबा बंदी है रहे खुदाबंदी तुम अगर क्या जानो लब अगर नहीं हिलते तो हाथ जाग उठते हैं हाथ जाग उठते हैं राह का निशान बनकर हाथ बोल उठते हैं नूर की नूर की जुबान बनकर हाथ बोल उठते हैं सुबह की अजा बनकर 
रोशनी से डरते हो रोशनी तो तुम भी हो रोशनी तो हम भी हैं शहर की फसीलों पर देव का जो साया था पाक हो गया आखिर रात का लबादा भी चाक हो गया आखिर खाक हो गया आखिर अजदहा में इंसान से फर्द की नवा आई जात की सदा आई राह शौक में जैसे राह का खून लपके एक नया जुनू लपके आदमी छलक उठे आदमी हंसे देखो शहर फिर बसे देखो तुम अभी से डरते हो Great. Uh, I Baba. think your voice. Well, yeah, it's beautiful. Uh, I think your voice would be better than mine for the, for the English, but I'll, I'll read it anyway. <laughs> uh, okay, hold on a second. Uh, so this is uh, so this is my translation. Are you afraid of life? You too are life. We too are life. Are you afraid of man? You too are man. We too are man. Man is language. Man is expression. You are not afraid of this. Man is bound to the iron bond of word and meaning. Life is bound to the garment of man. You are not afraid of this. Are you afraid of the unsaid? Are you afraid of the moment that has not arrived? Are you even afraid of knowing when that moment has come? Periods of failure of guileless domination have passed before, yet still you believe desire is nothing and this night of bound tongues is the road to power. But what do you know about it? If lips do not move, hands rise up. Hands rise up and become a sign of the path, become a tongue of light. Hands cry out, becoming the morning call to prayer. Are you afraid of light? You too are light. We too are light. Are you even afraid of light? From the ramparts of the city, the demon's shadow has finally been removed. The cloak of night has finally been torn, has finally turned to dust. from the throng of mankind the voice of the individual has come the sound of the self has come as if the blood of the traveler on the road of desire quickens kin- kindling a new madness an overflow of men look at men laughing look at the city inhabited once more are you afraid of now yes you too are now we too are now are you even afraid of now so um i i i have a question but faraz who has read it for a million times <laughs> as well i'm sure he has some questions as well uh my my question is well, why do you think this resonates so much with people i think yeah well from what i've what i've heard and uh, my friends in um, in pakistan have, have have told me that this people will often recite this as sort of uh, in in moments of social struggle uh mm-hmm. and uh it hasn't in caught on quite the same way as fez and, and some other poets have but this is that seems to be one of the one of the occasions where uh where where uh uh where it really becomes um recited and then it's also had a number of musical adaptations uh including in uh i forgot the name of the film um uh but uh there's a band called Indian Ocean out of India that did a cover of it as part of the part of the the uh the film. Mm-hmm. I think that this has as I told you I think this has real really serious heavy metal potential uh <laughs> and, or punk rock potential and by um a band like the Caminas or something like that. Um so I think that might be more a better interpretation than more of the kind of soft rock that that we've been people have been using but that's just my, <laughs> that's my feeling. Uh <laughs> So uh Faraz you have any questions about about this Yeah I have a question like in terms of like translations like for example when I read uh both Urdu and English I try to see how the idioms have been translated how the poetic devices which are used in Urdu how are they being actually being translated So when you were going through the process of translating like where you how much like what you because what i have noticed in your translations they are like they don't lose melody they are very melodic how rashid's poems are so do you where do you think that you have to compromise a bit uh, uh when when you are translating oh well one of the things the worst things is the uh is often with especially with rashid's poems is you'll have these wonderful build ups and build ups and build ups and build ups and then you'll get the verb at the end and then it all kind of clicks together but in in english because it's a uh, subject to verb object it's it's completely that 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 whole of that aspect is completely lost uh and uh 
And so I haven't tried to do anything with the with uh, converting it into into uh, English meter or something like that. Some people have done it. I think have done really successful jobs for Ghazal and stuff like that um, occasionally. But um, I think especially for people reading poetry now, especially in the U.S., there's there's very little knowledge about um, poetic meter and stuff like that. And I think people trained abroad. Um, and you know, India and Pakistan, probably in Dubai, have better kind of knowledge of uh, English literature than people here. Uh, so, uh, so I was trying to do more kind of colloquial um, speech, and so that at least it sounds okay or sounds normal in English, and not what I normally I read. My first drafts are, which are something called uh, Urdulish. It's somewhere in between Urdu and English that uh, needs to then get uh, then get refined. Is Nazm ke baare mein. میں سوال تو نہیں میں کچھ کچھ اظہار خیال کروں گا اگر وہ سوال کی شکل اختیار کر لے تو وہ بھی ٹھیک ہے اور وہ اسی نوعیت کا ہے کہ جو باتیں آپ دونوں نے بھی کی کہ ایک موسیقیت خیر راشد کی شاعری میں عموماً بھی ہے اور اس نظم کو بھی پڑھتے ہوئے جیسے فراز نے اس کو پڑھا آپ کو ایسے لگتا ہے کہ وہ ایک خرج کے سر سے شروع ہوئی اور پھر وہ چڑھتا گیا اور وہ اس طریقے سے آپ کو اس غنائیت میں لے جاتا ہے اس موسیقی کے ماحول میں کہ جو راشد کا ہی خاصا ہے اور خیر اور اتنی سی نظم میں یہ بہت طویل نظم نہیں ہے اس میں یہ کر دکھانا کمال ہے اور صرف یہ نہیں صرف لفاظی چل رہی ہے مانوی اعتبار سے کیفیت کے اعتبار سے یہ نظم اگر اگر نہ صرف راشد کی بلکہ اردو کی مقبول ترین نظموں میں اگر شمار ہوتی ہے تو کوئی وجہ تو ہے یہ یہ اس میں ایک جاذبیت ہے بہت دشوار بھی نہیں ہے الفاظ کے معاملے میں جس طرح سے ابھی ہم اگلی نظم کی طرف بڑھیں گے تو میرا تو یہی اس کے بارے میں بس سارے خیال تھا شکریہ So I, I, I think uh, I, you mentioned it in the book as well in the translations of Mere Bhi Hain Kuch Khab that sometimes Rashid can actually start off with some th- of, of an expression which is uh, very Arabic and Persian heavy. Uh, like for example, E Ishq e Azal Giro A Batab Mere Bhi Hain. But the Mere Bhi Hain Kuch Khab is like a very like plain Kari Boli, Urdu, uh, Hindi, and how he actually makes them together sometimes becomes very interesting but again challenging to to translate so do you because I, i'm sure you have like command over multiple languages so how do you see that persian and arabic and urdu kariboli coming together in a translation oh that's a yeah that's a great question and something i'm really interested in at the moment i think um uh, 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 rashid kimosiki ke ke bare mein hum humko um دیکھنا ہے کہ ان کے لیے فارسی فارسی کی مزیکی بھی ہندوستانی ہے وہ میرے خیال میں وہ ان کا خیال تھا وہ کوئی الگ چیز نہیں تھی وہ وہ ہماری وہ وہ اردو زبان کا ایک بہت اہم حصہ ہے اور اس لیے وہ وہ میٹر وہ بہر جو آزاد نظم میں جو راشد استعمال کرتے ہیں اس کا تعلق غزل سے ہے اور لیکن کچھ نظمیں ایسی ہیں جو جن کا تعلق جیسے میر کی ہم میر کا بہر کہتے ہیں لائک الٹی ہو گئی سب تدبیریں ایسی اور وہ بھی بالکل اردو والوں کا میٹر ہے لوگ کہتے ہیں کہ وہ ایک ہندی میٹر ہے لیکن وہ ہندی میں ایسی ایسا کوئی بہر نہیں ہے اور سو وہ بھی یہ سو اٹس یوزلی اٹس نارملی سو انسٹیڈ ایف یو ہیو ہیو ڈو ڈو اٹس uh let's see uh where you would basically do you can kind of substitute two short for a long and that sort of meter you know it's very familiar and uh and so he would switch into that at times as well but uh but mavra unki pehli kitab mein sirf do behar aati hain aur unka taluq dono ghazal se hain aur lekin ha so rash so kuch log rashid ke khilaf kehte hain ki unki shayari mein وہ آہنگ نہیں ہے جو ہم کو پسند ہے جو نرم ہے اور جو جس کا تعلق مقامی زبانوں سے ہے لیکن راشد خود اپنے بارے میں سوچتے تھے کہ میں پنجابی پوئٹ ہوں میں اردو کے پنجابی پوئٹ ہوں اور میری شاعری میں پنجابی کا اثر بھی آتا ہے اور اور فارسی بھی اور فارسی بھی میری زبان ہے وہ میرے خیال میں وہ ان کا خیال تھا اور کیونکہ 
कुछ लोग जैसे हिंदी हिंदी लैंग्वेज पे भी लोग कहते हैं कि अरबी और फारसी दोनों गैर मुल्की हैं और राशिद इस इस ख्याल के खिलाफ था और वो और वो और इसलिए वो मीरा जी से अलग है एक हद तक क्योंकि मीरा जी वो गीत के बारे में बहुत बात करते करते थे और राशिद गीत को पसंद पसंद था लेकिन उनकी शायरी में ऐसा कोई फॉर्म नहीं आता वो सिर्फ उनका ताल्लुक हमेशा गजल या वो दूसरी वो दूसरी मीटर से जिसका ताल्लुक मीर से है और जो आजकल जैसे फमीद रियाज बहुत इस्तेमाल करती थी और और जो आपको आपको आसानी से समझ सकेंगे वो जैसे एक मैं मैं एग्जाम्पल की तलाश करूंगा और दूसरी बात यह है जो बहुत दिलचस्प है कि राशि की शायरी में जदीद फारसी शायरी का असर भी आता है और उन्होंने जदीद फारसी शायरी का तर्जमा किया कर दिया और उनकी और मेरे ख्याल में उनकी जबान में खासकर ईरान में अजनबी में जदीद फारसी का असर भी आता है और जो अल्फाज वो इस्तेमाल करते हैं वो उर्दू बोलने वालों के लिए अजीब 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 से लगते होंगे लेकिन चिड़ी फारसी में वो बहुत आम होते हैं और और उसका एक असर भी आता है जिसका वो वो फेमिलियर है और ऑल्सो डी फेमिलियराइजिंग एक ही वक्त एट द सेम टाइम हाँ शुड वी मूव टू द सेकंड फॉर्म ये नज्म है या जी जी ये भी नज्म है और ये नस्बता तवील नज्म है इसकी नस्बत जो भी हमने पहली नज्म पढ़ी थी तो आप आप फरमाइए शॉन के इसको मैं एक ही मरतबा में पढ़ दूँ और उसके बाद आप तर्जमे की तरफ आएंगे क्योंकि मेरी तरजीह तो ये होगी कि एक दफ़ा पढ़ा जाए क्योंकि वही बात के एक नज्म का तसलसल है अब चूँकि नज्म तवील है इसलिए दो बातें मैं पहले अर्ज कर दूँ एक तो अपनी नालायकी का इजहार कर दूं क्योंकि नज्म तवील है मुश्किल नज्म है बड़ी नज्म है तो मैं अगर गलतियां करूं तो पेश की माजरत और नाजरीन और सामीन से ये गुजारिश के यकीन इसमें कुछ अल्फाज आपको मुश्किल मिलेंगे आम रोजमर्रा में इस्तेमाल जो नहीं होते तो बरए मेहरबानी नोट कर लीजिए आप आखिर में पूछ भी सकते हैं और शौन जब अंग्रेजी में पढ़ेंगे तो शायद खुद ही वो सवालों के जवाब आपको मिल जाए तो आ, ये नज्म है गुमा का मुमकिन गुमा का मुमकिन जो तू है मैं हूं करीम सूरज जो ठंडे पत्थर को अपनी गोलाई दे रहा है जो अपनी हमवारी दे रहा है वो ठंडा पत्थर जो मेरे मानिंद भूरे सब्जों में दूर रेगो हवा की यादों में लौटता है जो बहते पानी को अपनी दरिया दिली की सरशारी दे रहा है वही मुझे जानता है वही मुझे जानता नहीं मगर मुझको ये वहम शायद कि आप अपना सबूत अपना जवाब हूं मैं मुझे वो पहचानता नहीं है कि मेरी धीमी सदा जमाने की झील के दूसरे किनारे से आ रही है ये झील वो है कि जिसके ऊपर हजारों इंसान उफक के मुतवाजी चल रहे हैं उफक के मुतवाजी चलने वालों को पार लाती हैं वक्त लहर की जिन्हें तमन्ना मगर समावी खराम की हो उन्हीं को पाताल जमजमों की सदा सुनाती हैं वक्त लहरें उन्हें डबोती हैं वक्त लहरें तमाम मल्लाह इस सदा से सदा हरासा सदा गुरेजा के झील में एक अमूद का चोर छुप के बैठा है उसके गेसू उफक की छत से लटक रहे हैं पुकारता है अब आओ आओ अजल से मैं मुंतजर तुम्हारा मैं गुम्बदों के तमाम राजों को जानता हूं दरख्त मीनार बुर्ज जीने मेरे ही साथी मेरे ही मुतवाजी चल रहे हैं मैं हर हवाई जहाज का आखिरी बसेरा समंदरों पर जहाज रानों का मैं किनारा अब आओ आओ तुम्हारे जैसे कई फसानों को मैंने उनके अबद के आगोश में उतारा तमाम मल्लाह इसकी आवाज से गुरेजा 
افق کی شاہ راہ مبتزل پر تمام سہمے ہوئے خراما مگر سماوی خرام والے جو پست و بالا کے آستان پر جمے ہوئے ہیں امود کے اس تناب ہی سے اتر رہے ہیں اسی کو تھامے ہوئے بلندی پہ چڑھ رہے ہیں اسی طرح میں بھی ساتھ ان کے اتر گیا ہوں اور ایسے ساحل پہ آ لگا ہوں جہاں خدا کے نشان پانے پناہ لی ہے جہاں خدا کی ضعیف آنکھیں ابھی سلامت بچی ہوئی ہیں یہی سماوی خرام میرا نصیب نکلا یہی سماوی خرام جو میری آرزو تھا مگر نہ جانے وہ راستہ کیوں چنا تھا میں نے کہ جس پہ خود سے وسال تک کا گما نہیں ہے وہ راستہ کیوں چنا تھا میں نے جو رک گیا ہے دلوں کے ابہام کے کنارے وہی کنارہ کہ جس کے آگے گما کا ممکن جو تو ہے میں ہوں مگر یہ سچ ہے کہ تجھ کو پانے کی خود کو پانے کی آرزو میں نکل پڑا تھا اس ایک ممکن کی جستجو میں جو تو ہے میں ہوں میں اسے چہرے کو ڈھونڈتا تھا جو تو ہے میں ہوں میں اسی تصویر کے تعقب میں گھومتا تھا جو تو ہے میں ہوں میں اس تعقب میں کتنے آغاز گن چکا ہوں میں اس سے ڈرتا ہوں جو یہ کہتا ہے مجھ کو اب کوئی ڈر نہیں ہے میں اس تعقب میں کتنی گلیوں سے کتنے چوکوں سے کتنے گونگے مجسموں سے گزر گیا ہوں میں اس تعقب میں کتنے باغوں سے کتنی اندھی شراب راتوں سے کتنی باہوں سے کتنی چاہت کے کتنے بپھرے سمندروں سے گزر گیا ہوں میں کتنی ہوش و عمل کی شموں سے کتنے ایما کے گمبدوں سے گزر گیا ہوں میں اس تعقب میں کتنے آغاز کتنے انجام گن چکا ہوں اب اس تعقب میں نہ کوئی در ہے نہ کوئی آتا ہوا زمانہ ہر ایک منزل جو رہ گئی ہے ہر ایک منزل جو رہ گئی ہے فقط گزرتا ہوا فسانہ تمام رستے تمام بوجھے سوال بے وزن ہو چکے ہیں جواب تاریخ روپ دھارے بس اپنی تکرار کر رہے ہیں جواب ہم ہیں جواب ہم ہیں ہمیں یقین ہے جواب ہم ہیں یقین کو کیسے یقین سے دوہرا رہے ہیں کیسے مگر وہ سب آپ اپنی زد ہیں تمام جیسے گما کا ممکن جو تو ہے میں ہوں تمام کندے تو جانتی ہے جو سطح دریا پہ سات دریا کے تیرتے ہیں یہ جانتے ہیں یہ حادثہ ہے کہ جس سے ان کو کسی کو کوئی مفر نہیں ہے تمام کندے جو سطح دریا پہ تیرتے ہیں نہنگ بننا یہ ان کی تقدیر میں نہیں ہے نہنگ کی ابتدا میں ہے ایک نہنگ شامل نہنگ کا دل نہنگ کا دل نہ ان کی تقدیر میں ہے پھر سے درخت بننا درخت کی ابتدا میں ہے ایک درخت شامل درخت کا دل درخت کا دل تمام کندوں کے سامنے بند واپسی کی تمام راہیں یہ سطح دریا پہ جبر دریا سے تیرتے ہیں اب ان کا انجام گھاٹ میں جو سدا سے آغوش واقعے ہیں اب ان کا انجام وہ سفینے ابھی نہیں جو سفینہ گھر کے قیاس میں بھی اب ان کا انجام ایسے اور آخ جن پہ حرف سیاہ چھپے گا اب ان کا انجام وہ کتابیں کہ جن کے قاری نہ ہوں گے اب ان کا انجام ایسے صورت گروں کے پردے ابھی نہیں جن کے کوئی چہرے کہ ان پہ آنسو کے رنگ اتریں اور ان میں آئندہ ان کے روح یا کے نقش بھر دے غریب کندوں کے سامنے بند واپسی کی تمام راہیں بقائے موہوم کے جو رستے کھلے ہیں اب تک بقائے موہوم کے جو رستے کھلے ہیں اب تک ہے ان کے آگے گما کا ممکن گما کا ممکن جو تو ہے میں ہوں جو تو ہے میں ہوں
Shukriya. That's wonderful. Do you want me to read the translation? Yes. Ye Alim aur Faraz ko aur hamare bahut se advisors ko shayad samajh aa gayi hogi. Lekin Joy of Urdu bilingual isi liye hai ki mujh jaise log jinhone adab, Urdu adab aur shayari us tarah se nahi padha. इस स्टेज में आके हमने ये ये चीज एक पहचानी है और एक महरूमियत का एहसास अब हमें हुआ है कि वाकई वीव वीव लॉस्ट आउट ऑन समथिंग तो ये मुझ जैसे लोगों के लिए असल में ऐसे सेशंस हैं जिनमें हम आपसे रिक्वेस्ट करेंगे कि हमें थोड़ा सा गाइड कर दें और समझा दें ओके ग्रेट सो आई विल रीड द द ट्रांसलेशन सो सो व्हाट आई डिड इन so it's so i've translated here as the possibility of supposition and we can talk more about the meaning of uh, guma in a minute that you are i am jo tu hai main hu okay uh, so kareem suraj okay the munificent sun giving its roundness giving its smoothness to the cold stone the cold stone that like me rolls in brown meadows in memories of the age of sand and wind giving its generous profusion to flowing water it does not know me yet perhaps i alone imagine that i am my own proof my own answer it does not recognize me for my faint voice is coming from the other side of the lake of time this is the lake on which thousands of men are moving parallel to the horizon those moving parallel to the horizon are carried across by time waves yet to those who long for a celestial journey to them the voices of the underworld murmur time waves time waves drown them mariners are always frightened they always flee this voice for a thief of verticality sits hidden in the lake his curls dangle from the roof of the horizon he calls come come now i've waited for you from the beginning i know all the secrets of the domes trees minarets minarets towers ladders are my companions alone move parallel to me alone i am the final resting place of all airplanes on the seas i am the shore of every mariner come come now i have i have placed several tales like you into the embrace of their end so i'm doing for so for azal i'm doing beginning and i usually do i was doing capital b when i was doing the book and then for aba that was doing end with a capital e so into the abrace so the beginning and end of the or end uh, aba uh, sailors flee from his voice on the common highway of the horizon all travelers tremble but the celestial travelers gathered at the threshold of high and low are descending with the tent rope of this verticality alone grasping this alone they are advancing on the heights i have descended along with them and arrived on a shore where the footprint of god has found refuge where the weak eye, eyes of god have now escaped to safety this celestial journey became my fate this celestial journey i had longed for but who knows why did i choose that road on which there is not the supposition of union with myself why did i choose that road that has stopped at the edge of the heart's uncertainty the very head a very edge ahead of which is the possibility of supposition that you are i am but this much is true i emerged in hopes of finding you of finding myself in search of that one possibility that you are i am i searched for a face that you are i am i wandered in pursuit of a picture that you are i am in this pursuit i have counted so many beginnings i'm afraid of the one who says he now has no fear In this pursuit I've passed so many alleyways, so many thoroughfares, so many mute statues. In this pursuit I've passed so many gardens, so many wine blind nights, so many arms, so many so many raging oceans of so many desires I've passed. So many candles of awareness and action, so many domes of faith I've passed. In this pursuit I've counted so many beginnings, so many ends. Now in this pursuit there is neither a door nor a coming age every day's destination left behind is only a passing story all roads all known questions have become meaningless answers assuming the form of history only repeat themselves 
We are the answers. We are the answers. We are certain that we are the answers. How they repeat certainty with such certainty. But they themselves are their own negation, all like the possibility of supposition that you are, I am. All the logs, you know, that flow from the river on the surface of the river, they know that this is an event for which for them, for anyone, there is no escape. For all the logs that flow on the surface of the river to become, to become crocodiles, this is not their fate. The beginning of a crocodile contains a crocodile. At the heart of a crocodile is the heart of a crocodile. To become um, trees again is not their fate. The beginning of a tree contains a tree. The heart of a tree is the heart of a tree. Before the logs, all roads of return are closed. They flow with the force of the river on the surface of the river. Now their end is the gods that have always opened their embrace. Now their end is those ships that are not yet even conceived of by shipbuilders. Now their end is those pages on which black words will be printed. Now their end is those books that have no readers, nor ever will. Now their end is those painters' canvases that now have no faces, that the colors of tears would fall in them, and the future fill them with the form of their dream. Before the poor logs, all roads of return are closed. Those roads of imagined eternity are still open now. Ahead of them is the possibility of supposition. The possibility of supposition that you are, I am that you are, I am. Bas. Kya kehne, Sean, main, uh, uh, main ye, uh, aapka tarjima padhte huwe, main sunte huwe, pahle main ne kabhi nahi padha, uh, main, main urdu, uh, jo, jo matan hai, wo mere saamne tha, aur main saath saath aapka tarjima sun raha tha, uh, aur, uh, bhoat achha uh, tarjima tha, bhoat, bhoat khub. Ab, uh, uh, is nazim ke baare mein izhaare khayal bhi firmaiye. हाँ ठीक है तो मैंने इसके बारे में अपनी किताब में कुछ लिखा उसको और मेरे ख्याल में राशिद को समझने के लिए आपको क्लासी की शारी को एक हद तक पता होना चाहिए नहीं तो समझना बहुत मुश्किल होता है सो इन दिस पोम I mean, so there's the, it's like many of his poems from, this is, a, this is a one of the later poems from, which is the title of his last volume, uh, Guman Kamumkin. And here there's a lot of concern, as in many Rashi's poems about time and about temporality, Yani Bakht or Tariq Ke Barimen. And there's also uh, the question, one of the questions here is, is, is uh, uh, whom is he addressing, and do we have? Are there any clues in the text as to as to who this who is, and what what what? I'd be curious to hear what uh, what you think. And then there's also we can see there's a lot of parallels between uh, this poem and uh, Zindagi Save Darteho, um, that um, that we can try and try and tease out as well. Siddharth writes that it's beautifully translated. Siddharth, I agree, and also at yes, and you you write Urdu now. Okay, cool. Um, we have people say, uh, saying that they love uh, your Urdu, uh, Sean. So, aap Urdu mein hi guftugu kijiye. Agar uh, aap. Ha, koshish karunga. Ha. Uh, mera masla ye hai ki mera chitra angrezi of baas istemal nahi kar sakta. To mera pesha Urdu ki kelas ki tawash karta hu. Or, lekin tere mein koshish karunga. Ha. Acha to aapka. Acha so is. इस नज़म नज़म में ये गुमान का का मतलब क्या है और और आपके जैसे आप 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 लोग जो वो बोलते हैं आप आपके लिए गुमान का क्या मतलब है वो एक सवाल है गुमान टू बी वेरी ऑनेस्ट इट्स लाइक ये एक ऐसा लव्स है जो मेरे कॉमन यूजेज में नहीं है लेकिन इन माय फैमिली इट्स लाइक इट्स उसका जो ऑपोजिट है बदगुमान वो बहुत यूज होता है फ्रीक्वेंटली इज लाइक समवन हु एक्चुअली लाइक हैज लाइक अ वेरी फॉल्स और समवन हु इज लाइक बोस्टफुल अबाउट हिमसेल्फ कि उसको बड़ी बदगुमानी है अपने बारे में सो वैसे मैंने गुमान एज अ डेली यूजेज में मैंने उसको इट इज रियली डिफिकल्ट फॉर मी टू मेक सेंस ऑफ So yeah, it's it's real difficult for me to actually put a word in in English, uh, what what it might translate to. 
میرے لیے تو عام زبان کے استعمال میں ایسے ہی ہے جو یقین کا متضاد ہے یقین کی متضاد کیفیت کہ کسی چیز کے بارے میں آپ یقین سے کچھ نہیں کہہ سکتے تو آپ کا گمان ہوتا ہے آپ اس کے بارے میں انگریزی لفظ استعمال کیا جائے تو انسرٹن ہے یو ناٹ شیور تو وہ چیز گمان کا ایک عام استعمال کا مطلب یہ ہے اور دوسرا جس طریقے سے ہمارے پاس کچھ ایک آن لائن جواب بھی آیا ایک اچھا ہے کہ خوش فہمی کے بدگمانی کی جگہ اگر صرف گمان کہا جائے تو خوش فہمی کے معنوں میں بعض اوقات استعمال ہوتا ہے میرے لیے لیکن پہلا معنی جو ذہن میں آتا ہے وہ یقین سے متضاد کیفیت ہے گمان Yes, and so, yes, so this is always was in terms of uh, the um, translation, this was, this was interesting. So I went with uh, supposition here, and, uh, but it has a number of meanings, including doubt. And also, I think with, I think with like Bad Gumon, I think it might also have this idea of, yeah, of like, uh, I'll just say pride, pride ka matlab hoga, or just, or jo log apne aap ke baare mein bhoot sachte hain, huh? اور میرے خیال میں اور ہاں سو اس اس شہر میں ایک ایک وقت تھا ایک وہ ایک اچھا سو پہلے وہ وہ ایک حد تک وہ میرے خیال میں وہ جیسے قدرت یا نیچر اور تاریخ کے فرق کے بارے میں سوچ رہے ہیں کہ ہم عام طور پر جب ہم ترقی کے بارے میں سوچتے ہیں تو اس ضروری ہے کہ ہم وقت ایسی طرح سوچنا چاہیے کہ جیسے وہ ایک لائن ہے ہاں اور لوگ جیسے اقبال نے وقت کے بارے میں بہت سوچا اور راشد کی طرح آنگلی برسوں کا وہ ایک فرانسیسی فلاسفر ہے جو ماڈرنزم کے لیے بودھ ہے الیٹ اور دوسرے لوگوں کے لیے بھی اور ان کا خیال ہے کہ جس طرح ہم جب ہم وقت کے بارے میں سوچتے ہیں تو ہمارا خیال ٹھیک نہیں ہے کیونکہ ہم سوچ رہے ہیں کہ وقت جیسے ہم سوچتے ہیں کہ وقت از ہورزانٹل لیکن لوگ جو جن کا تعلق تصوف سے ہے اور وہ کہتے ہیں کہ اور برسوں سے بھی کہ وقت کا ایک دوسرا محسوس ہوتا ہے اور جو اور جو اور راشد کے لیے جو اہم بات یہ ہے کہ ہر فرمانی میں ایک ایک فرق ہے اور وہ کہتے ہیں کہ لوگ جو کہتے ہیں کہ ان کو معنی آتی ہے وہ وہ بدگمان ہوتے ہیں یعنی وہ وہ کہتے ہیں کہ ہم کو پتہ نہیں اور لیکن اگر ہم سوچ رہے ہیں کہ وقت جیسے ایک لائن ہے تو یہ یہ غلط فہمی ہے اور اور دلچسپ بات بہت دلچسپ بات یہ ہے کہ جب میں یہ پڑھ رہا تھا تو اس وقت میں کافی بہت کرٹیکل تھیری پڑھ رہا تھا اور ایک اہم جس کا نام ہے والٹر بینیمین جو بہت مشہور ہے اور وہ جیسے فیشزم کے خلاف لکھ رہے تھے اور انہوں نے بتایا کہ ہاں کہ ترقی کے لیے یا پروگرس کے لیے یا ایک وہ آپ کو لینئر ٹائم میں اپنے آپ کے بارے میں سوچنا ہے لیکن وقت کا محسوس الگ ہو سکتا ہے لیکن اور 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 اقبال نے بھی یہ کہا لیکن اقبال کے مطابق ایک ایک ٹیلیالوجی ہو سکتا ہے یعنی ایک ایک فورس اور اسپیریٹ از موونگ تھرو ہسٹری راشی کہتے ہیں میرے خیال میں کہ ہم کو پتہ نہیں اور لوگ جو وہ کہتے ہیں غلط کہہ رہے ہیں اور وہ کافی لوگ وہ کہتے ہیں کہ ہاں ہم پرمانٹ ہے کوئی کچھ فرق نہیں ہوگا This is, this is, everything is going to last forever. Or they can rush it. It's all, it kind of opposes the sense of um, permanence with change. And so we see often this idea of kind of the buried, this kind of buried city. It's a very powerful image in his, um, in his poetry. 
uh, where uh, where you see kind of the, many often you'll see this kind of opposition between uh, history and uh, and uh, and nature and uh, and claims of permanence are he challenges them with images of change and so on and so there's a number I talk about that in my uh, book it's a, it's the wo wo jab waqt ke bare mein wo samajhna kafi mushkil hai to you should wo uh padhna chahiye um aur wo ha ye tu kaun hai wo iske bare mein puchna chahta hu wo jo tu hai main hu wo bolne wala kisse baat kar rahe hain aapke khayal mein so who's this who's he speaking to and so he gives a clue so at one point and this is i uh what have i been doing uh जब वो कहते हैं जो तू जानती है हाँ हाँ सब कौन है वो वो एक औरत है या दिलचस्प ये है वो ये मेरा ख्याल है कि शायद वो अपने आप से बात कर रहे थे कि जैसे जात और खुदी और और रूह सब सब मोनिस अल्फाज है हाँ इस 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 नज्म का जो मिजाज है इसमें किसी एक महबूबा से बात करने वाला किसी एक मशूक से बात करने वाला आ, कम नजर आता है और ये कि अपनी जात से बात की जा रही है और वो एक, वो, वो सब मौजूद के जिनका आपने तस्करा किया कि एक वक्त की बहस है एक हस्ती की बहस है आ, तो आ, उसको आ, उसको महदूद नहीं किया जा सकता कि ये सिर्फ एक महबूबा से बात की जा रही थी तो इसलिए ये ये गुमान बेहतर है <laughs> कि आ, वो अपने आप से बात कर रहे थे हमारे पास गुमान के कुछ और साथियों ने बहुत अच्छे अल्फाज बताया जो कि उसी चीज की तरफ इशारा करते हैं कि जिनका हम शुरू में जिक्र कर रहे थे कि तर्जुमा करना कितना दुश्वार है इतने सारे अल्फाज यहीं पे लोगों ने बताए जो कि मौजूद हैं गालिब का एक मिसरा भी याद आता है कि हम पर जफात से तरक वफा का गुमान नहीं तो वो उसमें भी गुमान का लफ्ज इस तरीके से आया था कि मुझे अब अब आपने जफा भी कर दी तो मुझे ये गुमान भी नहीं हुआ कि आप तरके वफा की तरफ जा रहे हैं मेरे ख्याल में तो आप ऐसी छेड़छाड़ कर रहे हैं सो so, इस इस तरह से भी लफ्जों के मानी समझ आते हैं बाजू का था मीर और गालिब से मदद ले लेते हैं मेरा एक बड़ा इम्पोर्टेंट सवाल है बिकॉज इट लिंक्स जरूर ये इन 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 रिलेशन टू वट वी वर टॉकिंग अबाउट जस्ट नाउ की जो थीम है पोएम की and how we are saying that rashid is actually trying to to is saying ke time jo hai horizontal nahi and the way we look at time is not exactly how, and he's like using the expression of guman ka mumkin uh what i'm trying to understand is like um, sorry i'm just trying to find right words uh when we're saying uh, modernism in urdu literature like for someone like me who has studied uh, art from a very eurocentric point of view so i have a certain understanding of मॉडर्निज्म लेकिन वेन जब हम उर्दू में बात करते हैं और हमारी उर्दू लिटरेरी ट्रेडिशन के बारे में बात करते हैं वट डज लाइक मॉडर्निज्म वट डज इट इम्प्लाई वट इज इट मीन वट इज मॉडर्न उर्दू लिटरेचर वेल इट्स इट्स रियली इंटरेस्टिंग बिकॉज इन द कॉन्टेक्स ऑफ उर्दू इन पर्टिकुलर एस एम श्री हर्ड फिफ्टी मिलियन आपने हजार बार आज सुना कि लोग कहते हैं कि जैसे जडीदियत और तरक्की पसंदी में एक एक फर्क है और लेकिन जिनका नाम है बिलाल हाशमी जो आजकल वो तरक्की पसंदी का सही तर्जमा आप गार्ड होना चाहिए और वो बहुत दिलचस्प ख्याल है क्योंकि उनकी जैसे जैसे हमको हम सब सब लोगों को पता है कि उनकी जैसे पहली तरक्की पसंद किताब वो बिल्कुल मॉडर्निस्ट था और मेरी लेकिन दिलचस्प बात ये है कि पाकिस्तान के आने और इंडिया के आने के बाद आज़ादी के बाद कुछ लोग कहने लगे कि नहीं ये मॉडर्निज्म वो मगरबी चीज़ है हमारा मबूदी बस क्या कहते हैं मबूदुल फितरची निज़ाम अलग है और जैसे और खासकर लोग जैसे मोहम्मद अस्करी के बारे में सोच रहे हैं और सलीम अहमद और ऐसे लोग जिनका ताल्लुक दिलचस्प ये है उनका ताल्लुक एक जैसे पोरेनियलिज्म हाँ एक एक मूवमेंट है और काफी बहुत ओरिएंटलिस्ट 
जो खासकर जिन का ताल्लुक इस्लाम इस्लामिक स्टडी से था उनका वो भी ये ये लोग थे वो कह रहे थे कि हाँ दीन और मजहब के आने से पहले एक एक ही फरेनियल माबाद महसूस था जो अब खराब हो गया और हमको वहाँ वापस जाना चाहिए और अच्छा अच्छा मैंने एक मजमून लिखा कुछ देर पहले इसके बारे में और लेकिन उसका ताल्लुक गालिब के डेथ सेंट हेनरी से है जो 1969 में था और क्योंकि सलीम अहमद ने गालिब के बारे में एक किताब लिखा जिस जिसमें उन्होंने बताया कि मेर के खिलाफ वो बिल्कुल मॉडर्न है और वो हमारे नहीं और मेर बुद्ध बेहतर शायर है और तो सब वो एक बात है लेकिन राशिद के लिए वो अपने अपने किताबों के तारीफ में इन इंट्रोडक्शन वो उन्होंने मॉडर्निज्म के बारे में बहुत लिखा और उनका ख्याल है कि हाँ अगर आपको मेरी स्टाइडी पसंद नहीं है तो वो आपका मसला है <laughs> और ये नए तजुर्बों का शायरी की शायरी है और उसको समझने के लिए आपको आपको भी जरीद होनी होना चाहिए होने चाहिए और हाँ सो उनका ख्याल था कि गजल या ऐसे फॉर्म में नए महसूस इस हार्ड करने के लिए मुमकिन नहीं हमको नई एक नई शायरी चाहिए चाहिए लेकिन उसका ताल्लुक हमारी शायरी से होनी चाहिए उनके आहंग में और मजमून में लेकिन राशिद हमेशा वो जो वो वो क्लासी की शायरी में जो मजमून आते हैं वो वो ही वो हमेशा कुछ ले रहे हैं और कुछ वो ऐसे ही इन इंग्लिश ऐसे ही ट्वीकिंग इट एंड ही मेकिंग इट चेंजिंग द सिग्निफिकेंस बट यू हैव टू आपको राशिद को समझने के लिए पूरी पूरी नजमें नहीं लेकिन काफी ऐसी नजमें हैं जिनका मतलब शायद शायद क्लासी की शायरी में है फारसी में है और मुश्किल बात यह है कि राशि की शायरी में कोई कोई फुट नोट नहीं होते और जैसे एलियट के वेस्टलैंड के लिए लेकिन जो जब जब मैं अंग्रेजी पढ़ रहा था तो एक फुट नोट भी इस किताब में थे लेकिन राशि राशि के कोई फुट नोट नहीं है तो मैंने मेरी किताब में अजनबी Um, but then the la- later ones are more abstract, and sometimes, uh, I mean, often it seems to be kind of tweaking the original um, meanings of things, and also denying that sort of. Because like people like us, we will get the hack that a symbol has, jin ka taluk ma badal fitrdi manzil se hai, or Russia kare the ni shining. जैसे गायब जैसे गालिब ने वो वो गायब से वो वो आते हैं मजे में Yeah, and and uh, sorry before we ask uh, the we take this question because it's connected mm. to this so your title of your book uh mere bhi hai kuch khwab i too have some dreams so why did you choose this work to actually start of your book or title the book or encapsulate your your work so yeah it's uh well it, it, i think it, it covers a lot of you know rashid's kind of claims for the need for individualism or improvadiyat or um and this kind of mixture of languages and uh it's quite cryptic too i mean you can kind of figure up so much that they have you go ye khwab kiske bare mein hai like you can see kind of where what parts you can kind of make your own identifications uh in that one uh but uh, it's so funny i was looking mere ek dost hai uh professor uh pasha muhammad khan jo uh, toronto mein padhate hain aur unhone ek uh, new rashid archive banwaya aur uh, rashid ka ek uh, tarjuma hai jisme unhone ek note likha ki kisi ne uh, khwab ke liye uh, dreams likha aur rashid ne likha dreams theek nahi hai ye visions hai <laughs> lekin uh, mere khayal mein sha- ji uh, angrezi mein hum hamesha martin luther king ke bare mein sochte hain or um or i you know i too have some dreams or mere kaam mein koi tarikhi 
کنیکشن نہیں ہے لیکن ہم ضرور نگار ایسے کرتے ہیں اور ہم بھی ایسے کر سکتے ہیں کیونکہ راشد نے وہ امریکی امریکہ کے جیسے آج کی طرح ان کی ریشل ریلیشنس یا نسلی رشتے بہت خراب ہوتے ہیں اور بہت اور سو راشد نے بہت اس میں بہت دلچسپی لگی اور انہوں نے کچھ Uh, I think, I'm not sure, but I think I, I have a feeling that he was reading Du Bois uh, and the, like, the Soul of Black Folks. And he's done some, in Iran Mea Jimmy Kedusra edition, there's some things that come from Jinkha Taluk, African American spirituals. Like, and I haven't quite identified which, and you probably know the one I'm talking about, but I'm not sure if that, um, if it's kind of inspired by one or if it's, but I think he's very, very kind of uh, thinking very much about uh, Uh, racial politics in, in the U.S. after, after moving there as well. اختتام زمینے ایک چھوٹی سی نظم کے ساتھ پھر کریں گے ہم نے نظم سے آغاز کیا تھا جی وہ نظم ہے کہ جس کا بھی ذکر کر رہے تھے چونکہ شان اور فراز میں اتنی دیر میں نکال چکا تھا چھوٹی سی نظم ہے تیس سیکنڈ میں گے تعارف انٹروڈکشن کروایا جا رہا ہے دو لوگوں کا دو دو کانسپٹس کا تو تعارف اجل اجل ان سے مل اجل ان سے مل کے یہ سادہ دل نہ اہل سلاد اور نہ اہل شراب نہ اہل ادب اور نہ اہل حساب نہ اہل کتاب نہ اہل کتاب اور نہ اہل مشین نہ اہل خلا اور نہ اہل زمین فقط بے یقین اجل ان سے مت کر حجاب اجل ان سے مل بڑھو تم بھی آگے بڑھو اجل سے ملو بڑھو نو تونگر گداؤ نہ کشکول درویزہ گردی چھپاؤ تمہیں زندگی سے کوئی ربط باقی نہیں اجل سے ہسو اور اجل کو ہساؤ بڑھو بندگان زمانہ بڑھو بندگان درم اجل یہ سب انسان منفی ہیں منفی زیادہ ہیں انسان کم ہو ان پر نگاہ کرم آپ سب کے آن لائن رہنے کا بہت شکریہ نہیں نہیں ایک منٹ ٹھہری ہے ابھی کوئی نہ جائے ایک منٹ مجھ جیسے لوگوں کے لیے اس کو ٹرانسلیٹ بھی کر دیں آپ لوگوں کو تو سمجھ آ گئی علیم اور فراز دیکھیے دیکھیے اجل 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 جو ہے وہ اجل موت ہے اور موت کا انٹروڈکشن کروایا جا رہا ہے کہ عدل تم اجل موت تم ان لوگوں سے ملو ذرا کہ جو نہ اہل سلاد ہیں نہ اہل شراب ہیں نہ اہل ادب ہیں نہ اہل حساب ہیں نہ اہل کتاب ہیں نہ اہل مشین ہیں نہ اہل خلا ہیں نہ اہل زمین ہے صرف بے یقین ہے تو موت کو ان لوگوں سے انٹروڈیوس کروایا جا رہا ہے کہ پلیز آپ ان سے ملیں اور پلیز کوئی پردہ نہ رکھیں اور پھر ان لوگوں سے کہا جا رہا ہے کہ پلیز آپ بھی ذرا موت سے فری ہو جائیں فوت ہو جائیں کیونکہ یہ اپنی آپ کو زندگی سے تو کوئی اب آپ کا رب کوئی لنک باقی نہیں ہے اجل سے ہی ہنسیں اور ہنسائیں آپ بندگان زمانہ ہیں بندگان روپیہ ہیں تو اجل یہ سب جو ہے نا یہ منفی انسان ہے اور انسان کم ہے اور منفی زیادہ ہیں تو پلیز نگاہ کرم کی جائے Uh, yeah, so it's a nice way to end because it really kind of re- re- recaps some, some of the things we were talking about, um, particularly yeah. kind of the need to, you know, embrace the, uh, embrace kind of corporeal life uh, and instead of abstractions. And, uh, and uh, I mean, there's also with that one, people also mention, may also read it, you know, I mean, you can interpret it, however, you know, in, in different ways, but I think Uh, I think it might also kind of date to the period where there's a lot of uh, discussions about uh, decolonization in mm. Africa. Uh, so it's a little later, in some areas a little later than in India, Pakistan. So I think it might be somewhat timed with, with that, but it's a similar mm. sort of um, idea about kind of the need to kind of embrace death and just to accept um, mortality in order to kind of find meaning within, within life and kind of fight mm. you know, this and... Uh, just embrace, you know, change basically. And so we, when you kind of have these uh, images of continuity, then Rashid proposes change and it was change continuity. Uh, so it's, it's very, uh, it's, uh, 
it's it's uh, it's good stuff. <laughs> so so it's a good uh, good uh, poem to end end on uh, change and continuity, and we hope to continue with you. <laughs> Thanks. So uh, we hope uh, we will give everyone ample um, advance notice for the next one, inshallah. This was a sudden plan. So thank you everyone for being here. Or uh, bhot bhot shukriya. Okay. Thank you everyone.